Welcome back everyone. Today I'm doing a different kind of video as to why this game needs a cyborg uh, urgently. And uh, I wanted to um, do a different kind of content on the, on the channel. I'm just trying different kind of stuff. And uh, this is one of the things. It took me a lot of work to do this one. So if you did like the video, uh, please do leave a comment, do leave a like, and uh, let me know what you think about this. Now, let's start as to why we got to this discussion. And the first thing is that I have a big competitive play group. And we were analyzing as to what the game is missing at the moment. And uh, don't take it as a complaint as the, as the game is unplayable or anything like that. Farther from the truth, uh, I think that the game is in a very good spot. I think the game is uh, very well balanced uh, in some ways. Um, the only issue that I, we found with the game is that at the moment, uh, the games, the decks, like disparity uh, between some decks and the others uh, is too big of a gap for any one deck to be prepared against anything. Example. Uh, if you take something like Zoro, um, it is a hyper-aggressive deck that is going to play super low to the ground um, and then it's going to be attacking you early and late super for high numbers. So against a deck like Zoro, cards like Red Hawk, cards like, uh, I mean, just a lot of corners, uh, a lot of removal early on is very good. Like uh, th This kind of effects really help you prom like, like win. And those cards, there's a lot of cards that can be added in your cyborg just to combat this kind of decks. And then if you move to the next spectrum of the of the like of the, the game, we have our control decks, decks like Rebecca, decks like uh, Karakuri, like decks that are just sitting there and doing um, not, not doing nothing, but it's just sitting there and then attacking for five, attacking for six, uh, trying to remove your board, trying to just control the uh, the pace of the game until they're eventually going to be able to play a 10-drop Big Mom, um, a drop Karakuri, a 7-drop uh, Luffy, or they're going to just try to remove every time every card in your board until they have enough pressure, until they, they can play, uh, I don't know, any of the Big Moms that you can play in this game. So there is, and, and, and if you look at these two kind of decks, the gap between one and the other is, is tremendous. Like, the way you beat this deck, is by having a lot of removal and, and, and being really defensive. And the way you beat this deck is by um, by uh, being aggressive, by having yourself a little bit of pressure early on and being able to attack for 5-5-5 five, 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 or being able to just develop a lot of threats early on. And it is really impossible to build your deck to beat both decks. Now, you can argue uh, that, yeah, that's intentional, like some decks are supposed to have a better matchup versus something else and so forth, back and forth. Like like if you play La and you play against a heavy removal deck, you're going to have a, a, a difficult matchup. But if you play against um, Karakuri, you're going to have a bad matchup, for example. And yeah, to an extent, but then it doesn't make the game too competitive. Because then uh, if you want to to like play in a competitive event, you're going to eventually, in a tournament, going to be facing a lot of like different decks you're not gonna face just the, the one deck always um and I, even if, if red is the best deck we've gone to tournaments and i've gone to tournaments where i just don't even see red for a, a, like if, like at least until you are in the top tables and you see a bunch of other kind of decks in the in the early game and then you you might fall prey to those kind of decks so it feels really bad when you cannot like at least add in some cards to um to prevent this right now let's talk about how we, we implement a, 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 a cyborg for this game. I think the best option, and I, it's been widely talked about, is to do the game best of one because we don't want to do best of three in this game because there are some decks that do take a lot of time to play versus each other. And if you don't have a way to, um, if you make it best of three, uh, we're never going to end tournaments. We're never going to, um, yeah, it's, it's, just, it's going to be a, a nightmare. Uh, in, in general for, for like organizers and I understand that and I don't think they're gonna do the game best of three at this point it is best of one so we have to work with a best of one cyborg how does that work where you look at the opponent's leader uh, if they're playing Luffy, Law, whatever they, 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 they might be playing you look at their leader you're like okay I have an idea of what's gonna happen so I'm gonna side in this amount of cards uh, to combat this deck and then you shuffle and then you play your game as normal now in a game like uh, you can implement this in a different way. You can play uh, five uh, cards in the sideboard, seven, ten, or even fifteen. Uh, P 
playing 15, I don't think it's an option uh, because I think it's that's better suited for like a best of three game where you can switch back and forth between going first and second and then it changes like based on that. And because this is going to be a best of one deck, that's not what I'm arguing here. Um, I don't think 15 cards is worth to like have that many cards because then you're changing your deck too much and then it, it's, it doesn't keep the, uh, the essence of the, of the deck. I think what we want to do is um, somewhere in between the, the, the 5 and 10 cards, I think the best option would be like 7 because um, it would allow us to, to play like tech cards against certain matchups but don't overdo it like don't completely change the matchup and then uh all of a sudden you have a good matchup against like if you're playing law against law and then all of a sudden you're just playing removal and, and then all of a sudden you have a good matchup against the deck it's not it's not what we're trying to do here we're trying to just compensate for the the, the cards that are useless in x matchup and then just adding some cards that are going to help but not necessarily like just win the matchup although there's some cyborg cards that can just do that um, I think uh, just as a 7 to 10 cards, Cyborg is probably where we want to be. Uh, that will work with this uh, kind of system, right? Now, let's talk about some of the downsides of having Cyborgs. Um, I don't think there's much of a downside for anyone. Um, besides the fact that also the most powerful decks are going to be able to access uh, to, a, to a Cyborg, right? So if this, matchup, if this deck that had only one bad matchup, gets access to the, the cyborg then they're gonna all of a sudden have a, 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 a like a, at least a playable matchup against the, the, that deck right and it accentuates like the, the power level of x or y deck but that's always as, as i'm saying that's always going to happen there's always going to be a, a best deck and we like we're i'm not trying to say and that will eliminate some of the problems that we have with like uh oh this deck is too powerful we need to ban it. Oh, the deck is powerful. We need to limit all the cards. And then eliminating a little bit like with Cyborg that we can add cards to combat X or Y deck is better for the other decks than it is for the, the one soul deck that is going to gain an extra two or three cards versus their worst matchup. Because they also, slots for the mirror match are going to be needed. Like if you're gonna, if you're expecting to play a mirror match, then you're going to also need cards for the mirror. If you're going to expect to play against uh, the, the bad matchup, how many times are you expecting to play against the bad matchup? And then how many cards do you really want to spend on, on the cyborg for a bad matchup? So all of these cards, all of these things um, matter. And at least having a, a little bit of options uh, is really good, right? And I, I don't think it's a downside to, to have the best deck having also options for, for a cyborg because it makes the deck, the games more competitive. It's just like, oh, I have this card as an answer for this. Uh, Hey, I, at least I have a chance in this matchup because it feels really bad when you're playing against any deck and then you're like, no, I just ought to lose this game. Uh, I don't have any anything that can answer this and I just lose that one. Although there's always the opportunity to outplay your opponent. If your deck doesn't allow you to outplay your opponent, there is no outplaying the opponent. It certainly is just a matter of like the card quality on, or what your leader or deck is able to do has to match whatever the opponent's deck is able to do, right? So definitely uh, the cyborg will help the decks that struggle against the best decks the most. So um, I don't really see too many downsides to having a cyborg uh, besides time maybe for the TOs, but I, I think five minutes, extra five minutes on each match is not gonna make a tournament go forever. And it's gonna make a, uh, it's gonna make it more smoothly for everyone. It's gonna be a more enjoyable experience for everyone. And it's not just like, oh, I play against Karakuri, I don't have any chance because my deck doesn't deal with this deck because I'm too slow and I don't, I can't do anything about it. So it really does help uh, in the long run, I think. Now, what if you didn't want to have a cyborg, whatever your reason might be? Uh, then I would argue that we at least should add some level of interaction, and hopefully this is something that is in the works. It really works well with the uh, with the leader, but I think with with the game. But I think Bandai should consider making uh, some instant speed uh, interaction. Example, if you ever play Magic the Gathering, uh, we have instant speed, uh, not necessarily counter spells. I don't, I'm not talking about counter spells, but more like removal spells or, uh, uh, in, for example, Dragon Ball, which is another Bandai game, has uh, counter play on play. Like if they play something, you get to do something. 
in response to that and it doesn't have to be necessarily removal but it can do a uh, tap the card that it that's coming into play uh draw a card and do something else like increase your leader attack by something like it's some counter spell that is a counter uh, um is counter ability instead of uh doing it in combat which is good in combat but uh, what if if they create something like in DBS they have some, a card called called Bloodlust, which negates the, the effects of the card that is being played. It doesn't have to be the same card, and it has to be. It could be just like uh, the the cost mana reduction in in this game is different. Uh, it probably has to be like a four energy card or something like that uh, to make sense, because we do get a lot of energy for free, uh, like in like spam of five to three through three turns. So being able to uh, have cards like that that interact with other decks in a different way like what if you have four energy up into your uh yellow opponent and there have to be like oh do i really want to play this big mom into like this card that is going to negate the effect for the turn so it's just going to be a 12k beater now it might be worth it but they, they might just do a different play just trying to play around that and then that just adds some other levels of interaction to the game that um that it really just helps promote like a, a more competitive uh environment for the deck which it could be good and it could be bad okay and why do i say that it could be bad because we have to analyze what kind of game one piece wants to be and that's something that we have to ask ourselves as a community do we want the game to be competitive or do you want to be more casual friendly uh there is a, a benefit to both of course um more competitive means uh i mean it's more enjoyable for the competitive players right uh, you have more uh, interactions, you have more uh, levels of like uh, skill gaps that you can see. And that's good for every competitive player, of course, right? Now, what if, if the, wants to, the game wants to be more casual friendly? Uh, if we analyze the deck like, games like in Bandai, of course, uh, like Digimon and uh, Dragon Ball, um, these games have, ha like, Dragon Ball is heavily competitive and that was to a little bit to a detriment to the game because um it makes it, it like it has too many rules it has too many levels of interaction it, the game is extremely fun and extremely skill intensive but the problem is that because it's so heavily like interactable um and has so many ways to interact with the opponents uh the game is really complicated and that has been to a detriment to the game because it has been slowly dying and to the point that they, they had to revamp the game to make it uh, more playable for casual players. And that's important. That that, that goes to show why a, a level like Digimon, which is not, I'm not saying that it's not competitive at all. It's just that uh, it's more casual friendly because it doesn't have the, that many levels of interaction. It just has my turn, your turn, and we have some little interaction in between. Uh, but we're basically playing your turn, my turn, my turn, my turn, right? Um, and, and One Piece right now, it's just like a little bit in between both where my only level of interaction is are my counters, uh, but my counters are only uh, like 4k counters. It's only like power increase or decrease uh, counters. They're not really impactful to the gameplay. Uh, so they're easily, they're easy to play around. The other level of interaction in One Piece right now are the, uh, the, the trigger cards, which they are good for like a level of interaction, but they're random. So then that doesn't really, really add anything to like a, a competitive like a standpoint because um, we don't we, we don't know what we're going to hit out of life. So it could be good. It could be bad. I mean, it's never bad, but it could be good in this scenario or it can randomly be like whatever. And that's like Karakuri. That's why they're hated so much because it's just like random triggers out of life that it could win you the game out of nowhere. And uh, it's just really not something that you can play around uh it's just if you have it you have it sometimes so um that makes for the a more casual gameplay uh, on the game and yeah if you want to be more uh, casual friendly and uh, you want to increase like your level like the amount of people that want to play the game uh because it's easy enough to learn um then yeah i mean i guess we we, we will keep the game as it is um i would argue that if we want to increase the uh the level of competitiveness we add either one or both of the um, things that I wanted to talk about today uh, to make the game more enjoyable for the competitive, competitive players. Uh, but that's something that uh, I leave up to you all. Uh, let me know what you think about this um, topic that I'm trying to bring here. Uh, if you did like the video, as I said, just let me know uh, right in the comments and uh, let's bring it to a healthy discussion, not just like randomly say you're wrong 
and that's it. <laughs> that would be uh, bad for everyone. Uh, but with that being said, thank you all for watching and have a good day.